Traveling by plane is a good time-saving alternative, however, in certain places, a simple trip can become a nightmare if a place has dangerous airport landings. We've rounded up some of the worst around the globe. We took into consideration the following factors, having short runways, being located at a high altitude, being in a place with unusual weather conditions, registering a high density of air traffic or being in the middle of mountains or buildings. Each one of these dangerous airport landings require highly experienced pilots who must perform arduous landing and takeoff maneuvers. Although there is no single list that lists these dangerous airports, the names of eight of them are mentioned in this video. Number 1. Barra Airport, Scotland. Barra Airport is a short runway airport or STL port situated in the wide shallow bay of Tremor at the northern tip of the island of Barra in the Outer Hebrides, Scotland. The airport is unique, believed to be the only one in the world where scheduled flights use a tidal beach as the runway. The airport is operated by Highlands and Islands Airports Limited, which owns most of the regional airports in mainland Scotland and the outlying islands. Barra Airport opened in 1936. The airport's only destination is Glasgow. The beach is set out with three runways in a triangle, marked by permanent wooden poles at their ends, in directions 07-25, 1129, 1533rds. This almost always allows the twin otters that serve the airport to land into the wind. At high tide these runways are under the sea, sea, flight times vary with the tide. Emergency flights occasionally operate at night from the airport, with vehicle lights used to illuminate the runway and reflective strips laid on to the beach. Barra Airport also has a Civil Aviation Authority ordinary license that allows flights for the public transport of passengers or for flying instruction as authorized by the licensee. The aerodrome is not licensed for night use. Number 2. Tenzing Hillary Airport, Nepal. Tenzing Hillary Airport, also known as Lukla Airport, is a domestic airport and altiport in the town of Lukla, in Kumbu Pasanglamu, Salakumbu District, province number one of Nepal. It gained worldwide fame as it was rated the most dangerous airport in the world for more than 20 years by a program titled Most Extreme Airports, broadcast on the History Channel in 2010. The airport is popular because it is considered the starting point for treks towards Mount Everest Base Camp. There are daily flights between Lukla and Kathmandu during daylight hours in good weather. Although the flying distance is short, rain commonly occurs in Lukla while the sun is shining brightly in Kathmandu. High winds, cloud cover, and changing visibility often mean flights can be delayed or the airport closed. The airport is contained within a chain link fence and for security is patrolled by the Nepali armed police or civil police around the clock. The airport's paved asphalt runway is accessible only to helicopters and small, fixed wing, short takeoff and landing aircraft such as the de Havilland Canada DHC 6 Twin Otter, Dornier 228, L410 Turbolet, and Pilatus PC 6 Turbo Porter. The runway is 527M into 30M with an 11.7% gradient, the airport's elevation is 9,334 feet. The airport is used for passenger flights and for transporting most of the building materials and cargo to Lukla and other towns and villages to the north of Lukla, as there is no road to this region. Number 3. Pa Paro Airport, Bhutan. Paro International Airport is the sole international airport of the four airports in Bhutan. It is 6 kilometers from Paro in a deep valley on the bank of the river Paro Chu. With surrounding peaks as high as 5,500 m, it is considered one of the world's most challenging airports, and only 8 pilots are certified to land at the airport. Flights to and from Paro are allowed under visual meteorological conditions only and are restricted to daylight hours from sunrise to sunset. Paro Airport was the only airport in Bhutan until 2011. Paro Airport is accessible by road, 6 kilometers from Paro City, and 54 kilometers from Timpu by Paro Timpu Road. The airport has a single 2,265 m asphalt runway, and there is one terminal building that was commissioned in 1999. In 2021, the interior was revamped, adding many art pieces. Buda Air became the first international airline to operate charters to Paro in August 2010. Tashi Air, Bhutan's first private airline, was started in December 2011. In 2012, it was reported that 181,659 passengers used the airport.
By 2018, this number had grown to 397,599 and 6,761 flights were handled by the airport. The airport got four new structures, modified departure terminal building, cargo building, the relocated substation, and a parallel taxiway. Number 4. Wellington Airport, New Zealand. Wellington International Airport, formerly known as Rongatai Airport, is an international airport located in the suburb of Rongatai in Wellington. It lies 3 nm or 5.5 kilometers southeast from the city center. It is a hub for Air New Zealand and Sounds Air. Wellington International Airport Limited, a joint venture between Infratil and the Wellington City Council, operates the airport. Wellington is the second busiest airport in New Zealand after Auckland. Auckland handling a total of 3,455,858 passengers in the year ending June 2022. The airport, in addition to linking many New Zealand destinations with national and regional carriers, also has links to major cities in eastern Australia. It is the home of some smaller general aviation businesses, including the Wellington Aero Club, which operates from the general aviation area on the western side of the runway. The airport comprises a small 110-hectare site on the Rongatai Isthmus, a stretch of low-lying land between Wellington proper and the Miramar Peninsula. It operates a single 2,081-meter runway with ILS in both directions. The airport handles turboprop, narrowbody, and widebody jet aircraft movements. The airport is bordered by residential and commercial areas to the east and west, and by Wellington Harbor and Cook Strait to the north and south respectively. Wellington has a reputation for sometimes rough and turbulent landings, even in larger aircraft, due to the channeling effect of Cook Strait creating strong and gusty winds, especially in prefrontal northwesterly conditions. Number 5. Courcheval Airport, France. Courcheval Altiport is an altiport serving Courcheval, a ski resort in the French Alps. The airfield has a very short runway of only 537 meters with a gradient of 18.6%. There is no go-around procedure for landings at Courcheval due to the surrounding mountainous terrain. The airfield primarily sees use by smaller fixed-wing aircraft such as the Cessna 208 Caravan, as well as helicopters. The runway has no instrument approach pr procedure or lighting aids, making landing in fog or low clouds unsafe and almost impossible. The airport is considered dangerous, as it features a difficult approach, an upward-sloping runway and ski runs in the adjacent area. The History Channel program Most Extreme Airports ranks it as the 12th most extreme airport in the world. Number 6. Princess Juliana Airport, St. Martin. Princess Juliana International Airport is the main airport on the Caribbean island of St. Martin. The airport is located on the Dutch side of the island, in the country of St. Martin, close to the shore of Simpson Bay Lagoon. In 2015, the airport handled 1,829,543 passengers and around 60,000 aircraft movements. The airport serves as a hub for Win Air and is the major gateway for the smaller Leeward Islands, including Anguilla, Saba, St. Barthélemy, and St. Eustatius. It is named after Queen Juliana of the Netherlands, who landed there while she was air presumptive in 1944, the year after the airport opened. The airport has very low altitude flyover landing approaches because one end of its runway is extremely close to the shore and Mayo Beach. While Princess Juliana International is the primary aviation gateway to the island, there is also a smaller public use airport on the French side, in the French collectivity of Saint Martin, called Grand Casas Perrins Airport. The airport has a single runway numbered 1028, measuring 7,546 foot x 148 feet. It was renumbered from September 27 in late 2008. Pilots guided by GPS take a more efficient approach than those operating under VFR. Local airport rules prohibit aircraft from flying lower than 500 feet. Number 7. Huancho E. Eroskan Airport, Sabah Island. The airport, named after the Aruban minister Juancho Iroskin, has the shortest commercial runway in the world, only 400 meters long, flanked on one side by high hills, with cliffs that drop into the sea at both ends. The airport is closed to jet traffic, but regional airline propeller aircraft are able to land there under waivers from the Netherlands Antilles Civil Aviation Authority. The most common aircraft to land there are the short takeoff and landing, 
capable de Havilland Canada DHC-6 Twin Otter and Britain Norman BN-2 Islander. Jet aircraft are unable to land at the airport because the runway is too short, but smaller STOL airplanes are common sights. A small ramp and terminal are on the southwest flank of the runway. The ramp also has a designated helipad. The terminal building houses offices for Win Air, Immigration and Security, a fire department with one fire truck, and a tower. Tower is an advisory service only and does not provide air traffic control. Aviation fuel is not available on the island of Saba. Number 8. Madeira Airport, Portugal. The airport is considered one of the most peculiarly perilous airports in the world due to its location and its spectacular runway construction. It received the Outstanding Structure Award in 2004 by the International Association for Bridge and Structural Engineering. The History Channel program Most Extreme Airports ranked it as the ninth most dangerous airport in the world and the third most dangerous in Europe. Pilots must undergo additional training to land at the airport. That's all for today. See you in another video. If you enjoy the video and found it informative then please like the video and share it with your friends and social media. Never forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon next to it. Share the video if we earn it. Thanks for watching.